I'm kind of looking over my shoulder and I don't see anybody. I'm specifically looking for him. I don't see anybody. And then a little later, I get a text message to my phone and it's a picture of me standing where I was with the unfinished playset and both my children there too. And he sends me that picture and he sends me threats, not just to me, but to them. And they are very vulgar, pedophilic threats that he makes. And that was scary because now I know by some extension he's here. Jamie Beebe. And I'm Jake Deptula. On today's episode of Strictly Stalking, we're speaking with Donish, who goes by that Donish guy on social media, who's being stalked by someone who didn't like what he posted. Donish posts content that helps victims hold perpetrators accountable and has amassed millions of followers. And those millions of followers are enemies who are obsessed with harming him, his family, and his platform. Donish is here to talk about his stalking case, the steps he's taken to fight back, and share stories about the others he's helped through social media. Donish, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. How did you become a content creator in the first place? Well, I think it was like everyone else who got into it during COVID when everyone was quarantined at home, nowhere to go. I had lost my job due to the COVID restrictions. And so I got on TikTok and I was like, maybe I can make money doing this, uh, which to this day, I'll tell you, that's no bad idea. That's not a way to make money. <laughs> it's absolutely not a way. But um I just got on that and I started doing comedy. That's, that's why my background has always been just comedy, nothing, not investigative or anything like that. And I didn't do too well with that. I didn't like build a following doing comedy. I covered some political topics, still didn't build too much of a following. It wasn't until I discovered a skill that I had, which was the ability to identify people online correctly. And I did that once to identify a child abuser on the app. And, I, and that video went viral because. Then, you know, the, the authorities were called on, on this person and everyone loved it. And so then from then on out, uh, every time there was a video out there where someone needs to be identified, everyone's just tagging me in it. And I, I don't know why they're like, can you figure out what it is? Like, right, I guess. And then I get tagged in more and more and more. And then, yeah, my account just started growing and growing. And I'm like, this is, I guess this is what I'm doing. But like, it, it, it's a strange skill. I didn't know I had, but it, it helps people. So I. I figured, you know, if I have the ability to do something good that helps, I, it's my responsibility to do it. That's awesome. What is the skill exactly? Are you using computer programs to do that? Or are you just really good at faces? You know, um, no. <laughs> yeah, I just remember every single thing. No, um, it, it, it's actually, it's like, it's like you go through the clues that you get through a video that you see. And you simply just start searching, whether it be through Google or even f the strongest, um, device or app that I use to find people is Facebook because that's where everyone already gave away all their information. So I, I don't need to hunt or dig. It's it's there and they gave it away. And so there are different ways of doing it. I mean, I have spent days, like a couple hours a day going through like specific Facebook groups. Like I, I narrowed down this person lives here. They're of this uh, age uh, group. I bet they're on Facebook you know, talking about this, went through the groups uh, that I think they would be in and just look through like likes uh, pertaining to news stories of that specific thing that that had happened. What are some of the results that you get by doing your internet sleuthing and then identifying the perpetrators? I've identified over hundreds of people, but a lot of times they end up getting either uh, fired from their jobs uh, where they were, you know, poorly representing them and you know, whatever they were doing, or uh, they get arrested. Because I, I take on uh, not just like, I, I'm not digging through people's like old Facebook posts to try to embarrass them. These are videos of people getting assaulted. These are videos of people getting, like there was a hit and run once where someone hit somebody with their vehicle. Oh no, they actually hit him with a golf club, got out of the car, hit him with a golf club, then hit him with a car and ran off. And so they got one picture of the guy's face. I figured out who it was. And so that person ended up getting arrested and is on a million dollar bail right now. How many people would you say you've caught using the system? It's got to be hundreds that I've identified. As far as people losing their jobs or getting fired or, you know, being held accountable in some way, I truly don't know the number because also like not all of them are publicized. Not every job tells you that they fired this employee or terminated their ties to this employee. 
And not everywhere post is like, not, and I don't always, like, there's so many people identified. I have to keep track of everyone of, like, whether they've been arrested or something. And it's really hard to keep track of all of that. I'm sure you've gotten like a lot of haters, internet trolls, people who don't like what you're doing. When did those people kind of start surfacing on your social media? Well, one thing that I noticed was when I was a smaller account, like you could like have beef with another account or like someone says something and you say something mean to them or, you know, whatever it might be, or you didn't want to be their friend or whatever. And then my account grows. And so you have these people who had a bad experience with me then who like, just dedicate their platforms to trying to bring mine down. It's kind of odd. It's weird. It, not only that, but I also, as a safety measure, I tried to make my my profile picture look a little intimidating because I was getting a lot of death threats and I just wanted it to stop, to be quite honest. So I make this profile picture with his laser eyes of that. And maybe this will be a little ten, uh, intimidating to stop people from just threatening. That, that's all I wanted. And Unfortunately, there are people with, you know, mental illnesses that are on the app because nothing would restrict you from getting on the app. And and so then they, they've created lore out of that. And there are people who are very unwell, who are all <laughs> built a community that believe that I go around like killing people or like yeah, I have like a cult or that like I, you know, I'm stalking people. Like they make up the craziest lies about me and there's no reasoning with them. And it's and it's the most bizarre thing ever. But a lot of these people, oh, and then some people who in the past didn't like something that I posted those political, when I previously was a political account, still holding a grudge about that, even though I'm no longer a political account. And so they're just trying to be like, oh, what you just did right now is illegal. Uh, you identified someone. That must be illegal. And they, they call it and they go, he doxed someone. And they go, no, he did not. He did not dox someone. And uh, it's funny. I mean, not funny, but like ironic is that by doing this kind of thing, I end up getting doxed and I end up getting swatted and stalked, but in the actual definition of these terms. So much so I could say that the, a person that I've gone after or people who make content like mine have gone after has tried to in return post our address and say to his followers, go get him. And then that person got arrested for doing so. So the only person on TikTok that's been arrested for actual doxing is someone who did it to content creators that identify people. It's not us. We, I have, I mean, not that it makes me any better or worse than anyone else, but I don't have a criminal record. I don't, I don't engage in criminal activity and, um, you know, I don't dox. And that, um, what's missing in that definition for people that try to hold that over me is that there has to be that malicious intent. When I give someone's name, if I said, go, you know, harm this person to my audience, that's illegal. You know, that, that is illegal, but, but I'm not saying that. And I would never say that. I don't believe in doing that. From these people that, are being internet trolls and whatnot. There are some that have really stood out and I guess gone the extra mile and really started stalking you and one in particular. So how did this person that we're going to talk about today, how did you, how did this person find you? How did you know that this person was dangerous and you were being stalked? Like how did everything begin? Okay. Well, it actually began two years ago. Uh, this is 2021. It was summer, and I had uh, I also take an interest in reporting on extremism in America, domestic extremism, partially because I'm Middle Eastern, and it's somewhat therapeutic uh, after years of post on eleven America being like, you know, having uh, treated differently at the airport and uh, having words like terrorists thrown at you. It is somewhat like therapeutic to identify these uh, domestic terrorists who are not Middle Eastern and erasing that stereotype away from us. So I do enjoy covering that topic too. But unfortunately, a lot of them are white supremacists, so they don't take too kindly to it. Uh, anyway, so that's relevant here because in 2021, I was covering this story of a website called uh, or server called Epic. And Epic's uh, servers hosted these uh, websites that were like far right websites, Nazi websites, KKK websites. But all of it was encrypted. And so you didn't know who was on this website, who was donating to this website or anything. And the group Anonymous had hacked their servers and was planning on releasing every single name and every single information. They had to go through terabytes of information. I thought this was very interesting, so I posted about it. Also, mostly because Anonymous as a group is kind of like, like, like people don't really know, are they a real thing? Do they actually do something? Is that just, you know, made up internet fantasy? And to see that they're actually doing this, it was kind of cool, because to me that was like evidence that they actually are real and they actually do this kind of thing. So I reported on the epic hack, and immediately this, my stalker, uh, my current stalker right now uh, had contacted me for the first time out of the blue 
and threatened to just kill me. Like that was his first message. I'm going to kill you. And, <laughs> and then he unsent it so that I wouldn't be able to like either screenshot or report it or whatever. And then he said, but, but I did repeat several times in the conversation, did you just threaten to kill me? Why, why are you threatening to kill me? And he said, he wanted me to take down this post on Epic. I said, great. So you're acting on behalf of Epic. And he said, no, I'm acting on behalf of myself. I just, I'm going to, I'm going to harm you because you reported on this. And I said, okay, so he, you were hired by this guy probably. And he goes, no, I was not. I, I'm doing this on my own. I just want to do this to you randomly. I go, okay. So I found out that the owner of these um, Epic servers, his name is Rob Monster. That's his real name. And I saw that other reporters, like this reporter from the Daily Beast, was going after him on Twitter for sending my stalker after him as well. And he he was very you know public and vocal about it and forcing you know Rob to answer for it. And when I noticed that, I dogpiled onto it and sent screenshots and said, you also sent you know my stalker after me as well. And after about like a day, we never heard from my stalker again. Now, the reporter didn't hear from him because I, I was in touch with that reporter after that. Uh, I didn't hear from him anymore. We didn't, we didn't deal with this guy anymore. He was gone. So I didn't really think about my stalker anymore until, and it's actually not until the next year that he shows up again. But before that, now in 2022, January, the end of January, beginning of February, there was a video posted, a viral video was online. And of course, I get tagged in it to identify who this person is. It was this crazed woman in a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot who was trying to run over a young woman, a pedestrian, uh, in a fit of road rage. And the victim, who almost got hit by the car, posted this video on TikTok and said, someone help me identify this person. They tried to hit me with their car and they you know, drove off. And they assaulted me. I'm sorry. In the beginning of the video, she reaches into the window of the woman recording, uh, the victim in the scenario. She reaches in, grabs the phone away, and um, she has to push... She has to push the aggressor out of the, out of her window. So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I, I, I contacted the victim and I said, where did this take place? And they told me where it took place. So I was like, okay, in this area here, this is what this person kind of looks like. Let me go ahead and try to get a still, even though the picture is a little blurry. I'll try running it through, you know, facial recognition. One of the softwares online, which by the way, these softwares are not perfect. So I don't recommend people use it. I always have to, you know, verify on top of it. So I ran her through that. And this is a person, this is a blonde woman who has had plastic surgery living in you know, South Florida. So I got a lot of results. And, and so it was really difficult to narrow that down. So I contacted the victim and I said, hey, we're going to do like a lineup. I'll send you a couple. You tell me whether or not you know, it looks like it could be her. And so we, we narrowed it down to like it could be between two. And one was an adult film star and, and another one was just this other woman. And so I just tried to look them up on Facebook to see if they had anything identifying on their Facebooks. And one of them, sure enough, had the same car that was in the video. And I was like, oh, this is wonderful. It must be this one. But still, that's not a verification for me. So I contacted the person who I believed that it was directly. And I said, I sent them the video posted on someone else's website, uh, page on Instagram. And I said, hey, I'm worried this person's going to dox you. Do you have a good lawyer? And she replied, oh, my God, do you think I need one? And I was like, there you go. I got her. So I posted that video. I identified that it was her. And I sent that information to the police. Soon after identifying her, I also searched her up to see, like, if there's anything else about her online. I found her job uh, where she worked. And I had also found that I was contacted, actually, by all of her ex-coworkers. And they tell me, oh, my gosh, this person is, you're dealing with an insane person. You don't even know how crazy she is. And they send me like all the stuff that she had done as their boss. And it was it was literally uh, psychotic. I had to get so much confirmed because I, it was so crazy. I didn't think it was real. They sent me a photo on her desk of all these women that worked at this place that they worked with X's drawn through their faces, holes torn into their faces, uh, curse words written on them, like a burn book. And I was like, is this real? Can you verify? And, and they verified it. And so I posted it. She got arrested after that. She tried to like push back by responding to re bad reviews left for her place of business and say, and talk about me because I made the video. But uh, ultimately she was arrested. And so she was charged with assault, battery, and burglary. That's because she reached in the car, knocked her over the phone and tried to hit the victim with the car too. So after that, she was put on probation. And also one more stipulation that she had from the judge is that she wasn't allowed to go to that Dunkin' Donuts anymore. And for some reason, that was funny to me. So I made one more video of myself eating Dunkin' Donuts at Dunkin' Donuts and just said, I'm enjoying the life that, in this person's name, we'll never get to enjoy. Mm. 
when you found everything out about her, all these things that she was doing, were you worried at all for your safety at that point? Only because she had money. Because the thing is, is like when 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 you're going after someone and they they have money, they can they can afford to you know do something. I mean, I, the thing is, is I know I haven't broken any laws, but they can just make stuff up and get me in court just to like waste my time or waste my money. So that's what I'm mostly scared of. Like I was mostly like worried about that, but at the same time, I'm like I'm I'm not afraid of doing the right thing. But the thing, the way she abused her ex employees, that was just bizarre. And I, I was like, for their sake, I mean, it's really hard to me to say no to a no to someone who's been like treated unfairly like that. So for the, so I did anyway, because they they, uh, they never got a voice and they were, they were humiliated by her. She did a lot of horrible things to them, too. So then then, yeah, then, then about another month passed. And this is still 2022. I think it was May at that point. Suddenly, I start receiving very, very aggressively hateful messages. Uh, this is from my stalker now. The stalker from the year before who said he was going to kill me over a website that I reported on. And you knew right away that it was the same person? They used the same handles? Yeah, his, he, he texted my phone. His phone number is the same, uh, is posted online. He he has all of his own information posted online. Uh, so there's kind of like a, you know, you can't dox me because here it is, <laughs> but he doesn't live there. So he, he, the phone number I recognize, but also he had no trouble identifying himself and he was posting it on his verified account on his other social media accounts. He was posting the text messages that he was sending me. So, you know, it's him. And he was, first thing he sent me was my social security number, the names, information of everyone in my family, my children. And he promised to not only bring harm to me, but harm to them. And what he, the things that he said were so vile and horrible, I can't even like repeat it, even filtering and masking it. Like, I, I, it's just, it's the most aggressively racist, horrible things. But at a certain point, it's also suspiciously too aggressive. He continued to send me hundreds and hundreds of messages threatening to harm me in so many ways and, and threatening to harm people that I love. Then also, doxing my neighbors and then calling my neighbors and threatening them and posting those conversations online. I had contacted the police, but he had also been contacting them too. Like he was very brazen, very bold. And he, he just kept coming after everybody around me. And what he would do, like he'd call my neighbors and say that I was a pedophile and that they need to stop me. And when they say, who the hell are you? He would get mad and then he'd start threatening them. But his goal was constantly to try to incite some sort of violence against me. He would send me pictures of himself with the Proud Boys. He would send me pictures of himself, like, uh, hanging out with, you know, Ron DeSantis or something, which I don't I understand what that, like, so you got a photo op with him. I don't understand what that means to me. And he'd send me all these, like, unrealistic threats, like he's going to have these RICO charges against me, racketeering charges. So, like, a lot of it was just, like, gobbledygook, but, like, he's he's also planning on doing actual harm. So, but he's, is he posting these threats online? Yep, yep, yep. On a verified platform that allows that. There are far right social media websites that don't stop you from doing that. So if you're showing these threats to the police, can they do anything about it? So I showed the threats to the police and the worst threats are in the coming to the phone. And the way he words his threats, the police at first were like, well, he's skimming the line. I'm like, no, he's not. like, you'll say things like, I want to give you a bullet point to your head. So you finally get what I'm saying or things like, I'm going to kill you in Minecraft because that's a game or, you know, like he, he'll, he'll say he'll say the direct threat and try to mask it a little. And it was unbelievable that the police and the FBI are both like, yeah, you know, uh, he's just right in that line. And I'm like, are you are you what the what are you talking about? That's obvious. You could tell what he's obviously doing. He's got a criminal history of doing this kind of thing. He's on a jail for choking someone once like he's he's not well, but they they that he would also call the police and say i'm harassing him and that i'm the one texting him and that uh, i won't leave him alone and the text messages are fake or whatever and the cop told me because he said that because he said that they have to investigate and so they have to get a warrant for the phone records and i said do it hurry up <laughs> i want you to do it and so they do and then the investigator tells me this could take a long time like very very long time for the district attorney to do anything it could take a year i don't know how much more and I was like, that's not acceptable. That that's that's horrible. And then uh, one day, I got these really disturbing text messages from him. Uh, th this is what is like. This is the worst thing that happened to to be quite honest. He kept threatening to come to my house 
Uh, he kept threatening that, and he would even post videos of himself in a pool and claim that he's at a hotel in my town and that he's going to come to my house when I least expect it to get me. But I knew that none of the – I live in a small town, and none of the hotels here have outside pools because it's very cold here. And so I realized he wasn't here. He wasn't here at all. So I wasn't, you know, too concerned, but I was still looking over my shoulder. I still let the police know they're still, you know, patrolling. And then I, uh, and I never talked about any of this online, on my platform. I stayed quiet about all of this for a very long time because I didn't want to give him the satisfaction of even like acknowledging any of it. Because I thought maybe he'd go away if I did that. Maybe he'd get bored. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, we do tell people a lot of times if, you know, no contact can help and that kind of stuff. So that makes sense that you wouldn't want to give him that extra attention. That's also why the police were the first to actually suspect. And they said, I think he's being financed by someone. And I said, why do you think that? He said, because like, he's just, he's, he's coming at you like he's like, it's his job. Not like he's like obsessed with you. Like he, it feels like he's doing work. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I feel that too. But regardless, um, so on that day I go outside and I'm, and I was actually finishing up uh, building a playset for my kids for the summer. And while we're out there, I check my phone. I see these threats of him saying he's, he's there now. He's at my house now. So I'm kind of looking over my shoulder and I don't see anybody. I'm specifically looking for him. I don't see anybody. And then a little later, I get a text message to my phone. And it's a picture of me standing where I was and that, with the unfinished play set and both my children there, too. And he sends me that picture and he sends me threats, not just to me, but to them. And they are very vulgar pedophilic threats that he makes and that was scary because now i know by some extension he's here if he's not here by some extension someone is and then he tells me that he's put up posters around my town and that i should drive around and probably look for them and so sure enough i see these posters that have my pictures on it pictures of me sometimes pictures of me and my family with my phone number my full name my address and it says that uh, uh, local pedophile warning local pedophile lives here here's his phone number or it was like a swingers party at this guy at this house at this time. And, you know, anybody's welcome to come. And so I was just trying to figure out who was posting. Like, I'm driving around town trying to find them. I might find one at a Walmart and I asked them for the camera footage and they can't give it to me. They can only give it to police. And so I thought, oh, you know, I'm not going to be able to get them on camera. So after that, I installed cameras. But that was that was really terrifying. But what's really interesting is that I told the police, he sent me a picture. He just sent me a picture right now of him in front of this sign in front of the town. I'm not there yet because I'm taking signs down from over here. Can you guys go there right now before I've touched it and save that evidence, save the fingerprints? You know, I don't want you guys to say that because I touched this, there other fingerprints. Just save that one there in case there's any evidence on it. They go and they take it and that includes, and they left a hat there too. So they took a hat and the poster. So they have a copy of that. But they said that we still at this point thought it was my stalker and not, the, and not anybody else, but we don't know how he would have done it because he wasn't physically there they pinged him in florida they did his uh they, they ran his number uh they pinged it and they got him in florida so they're like he's definitely not here and so i i'm just confused and i don't know if what the police are thinking at this point but it's kind of scary not knowing who's there and they're like i'm going to come back tomorrow too he kept posting gonna be, wait for wait for tomorrow wait for tomorrow i'll see you tomorrow too and so now it's scary because i don't know who i'm looking for and they're somewhere around me right now and they're threatening to harm me. and this guy's been doing nothing but inciting violence he even try to say you're right I'm not there. Uh, it's the Proud Boys that are there, and they're coming to get you or whatever. Right. So at this point, you're thinking it could be him. It could be one of his followers. It could be anybody. Yeah. So so because of that, we left the house. And so I was like, my, my, my family stayed somewhere else. And I stayed here by myself. And they stayed somewhere else. And for a lot of these, for a lot of the time that I had to deal with stalking, I made sure I was the only one in this house because uh, I don't want to put anybody else in danger. And... I also want to be able to find out who it is, though, too, because the police weren't doing anything, as common in stalking cases, which is unfortunate. What was happening, like, in your personal life with this in the town? Like, were people believing this? Were people reaching out to you? Everyone had my back. Everyone had my back. They did a town meeting. They did a, like, not, not the whole city, but, like, this area that I live. They did a meeting, and everyone... I didn't even have to say anything. It was actually really nice. They all said, so it's because Donish posts this much stuff online where he identifies people and he helps people who, you know, need, need help. They didn't introduce it as anything harmful like, or anything like that. But one thing they said, and, and, you know, you have people there that disagree with me politically who were like, it's his right to freedom of speech to post whatever he wants. He's not harming anybody. 
And most people there were in agreement that this person has no right to threaten me, my family, my kids, my neighbor. He has no right to do that. Treat someone that way. So they were like, you know, we have your back. And every time they called one of them, they called the police on, on him. So everyone was informed. Everyone knew. And while he intended to get these people to actually harm me, they decided to defend me, shield me, which was, was really sweet, to be quite honest, um, because otherwise this could have been very scary. The issue is the soccer wasn't able to actually, he wasn't able to get anybody to turn on me or do something to me. He wasn't even, even, even able to dig up anything on me. Because I, you know, un- you know, unfortunately for him, I've got a pretty boring past. I don't, I, <laughs> again, no criminal record, no, I, nothing like that at all. So he just has to make stuff up. So he says, so he started saying this guy killed someone. So he just starts saying Donish killed, killed a 14 year old. And he starts contacting people on TikTok, on Instagram that have made negative videos about me and says, this person has killed someone. And then he gets this YouTuber, this very like small YouTube account to just post it. Another person inside of the country, uh, so an Australian YouTuber, says, just say that Donish killed someone. And then, and then he sent that to other people and they started posting it, people who already didn't like me. And this is kind of scary for me because that's, you know, that's a scary rumor to be thrown around. And eventually I had the police call me and they said, why is he saying this? And I said, I don't know. Did you ask him who this 14-year-old girl is that I killed apparently? And he said, yeah, I did ask him that and he didn't have an answer. And then when I just said, I just need to know who the victim is, he yelled at me and hung up. I was like, okay. So, you know, like, <laughs> this is all bullshit, right? And they go, I mean, it seems that way. I'm like, okay, good. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, I don't want someone to come after me thinking that I did something horrible. A couple of days later, he had purchased billboards in my town with my photo on it, my profile picture and a photo of me without my profile picture, you know, filters on it. And it just said, doxing is violent. And his phone number for an attorney in New Jersey. So uh, I, it was it was strange. It said doxing is violent and in a law office. So I could tell this person had trouble trying to get the billboard they wanted. So they're passing it off as a like, you know, advertisement for an attorney. And and they're not accusing anyone of anything. But it was, a, it was uh, you know, a legal use of my image to advertise this um, attorney's office. Well, uh, when we contacted the billboard company, they said that the person who paid for these was the, was the attorney, that the phone number is behind. And so I said, okay, that's interesting. We'll write that down. And then there were penny saver ads, full page penny saver ads, same thing. My profile picture, the phone number to this attorney. And once again, the attorney had paid for that. So the stalker was sending me his text messages saying that he was being, that he has a lot of money hundreds of thousand dollars that he has in store and just to come after me, uh, that the parents of this murdered girl gave it to him, which is so weird. He's telling me this because I, him and I know it's not true. Why is he saying this to me? And then he's spending like a hundred dollars on the billboard and $25 on the penny saver ad. Clearly he's not being paid that much for it. So then I get contacted by a group of people and this was really bizarre, but a group of people reach out to me and say, we want to help you. And these are all people who I looked some of them up and they do investigative work like I do. They try to identify people. They try to hold people accountable and such. And I said, why do you want to help me? And they say, we have all been victims of this exact same stalker. We know how he operates. We know uh, what to do. We know how you sh- what you should do and what he's going to do and all that. And, and we just want to help you. And I said, okay, great. And so you had all these people like coming after him now and distracting him. And they said, you could go, go on your, go about your life, go about making your content, do your stuff. We have him distracted. And they were posting all his stuff about him to get his attention, uh, posting this audio of when he was arrested and he cried uh, while speaking to his lawyer about how he can't afford whatever. And of course I would trigger him and that distracted him. So I continued to make my content, continue to help. And throughout all of this, I'm still making my content, but now it became a little easier. They took a little weight off of it. But for some reason, that stalker just, he had, he was focused on me. He was laser focused on me and he couldn't, he, he was frustrated as my account continued to grow throughout it because he was kept saying, I'm going to get you banned, deplatformed all this. And again, my platform grows. Then it was after all these people who identified people were all working together. Uh, they said, uh, well, we need to find the financer. And I said, is there really a financer? I said, yeah, that's how, that's how this stalker operates. That, that's how he always operates. There's always a financer. He doesn't just do this. He just, he, there's always a, somebody who pays him or some, something. And I said, okay, well, I have one suspicion. And they said, I said, I think it would be this person that I got arrested back in February because she's the only person rich enough and crazy enough to do something like this. And they said, well, look into it. And sure enough, I get a, uh, I, I get a message a couple weeks later from one of them that said, that said that pool that he was in, remember that pool he was in at that hotel? And I said, yeah. He's like, does, does this person that you got arrested, does she have a 
pool in her backyard? And I said, oh, let me check. And then there's other photos that the stalker had on his Facebook, which was him at a ranch in front of a horse. And it says, at my boss's estate. And I was like, okay, so he has a boss. And this wasn't just a fake post. And so I was like, I got to find out whose estate this is. So we got as many background pictures as we could. At the same time, the stalker was amping it up by making fake calls to CPS and video, video recording himself making fake calls to CPS on me, saying that I'm doing horrible things to my kids. And then he tells everybody on his verified platform to call CPS on me as well and to say that I'm doing this. He gave him the number for CPS, my information, my address and everything. He said, call this. And then I got, you know, several calls to CPS saying that I'm harming my child. And the, when the people who were looking into him said, we're in that room right now. If we're able to find whose place this is, I bet you he in that room he's he's on their property still. So we we uh, check my the person that I had arrested. We check the information online, and turns out, uh, yeah, they bought a ranch in November uh, the previous year, and that ranch has a pool that looks exactly like the pool he was in when he claimed he was at a hotel in my town. And we we were like, does this place have a? Well, we looked at Zillow, and sure enough, it has stables too. And so I, I got in touch with a couple of people that my stalkers finance. So my stalkers finance, or we believe it to be. Remember when I said that, you know, people from her life reached out to me after I made that first video, like her ex-employees and stuff. Well, I had sent them the pictures of the ranch and I said, is this, you know, this person's ranch? And they're all like, yes, yes. They, yep. That's their place. Why is this the person who's is this person stalking? Is this the person who's stalking you? I was like, oh, oh my gosh! They all confirmed it was him. I even got contact with their exes, each of their exes, my the financiers. I said, is this their property? He said, yep, that's his horse. That's 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 their property. So I've confirmed it. It is them. And that's once I figured out who's behind it. I was. That's when I was just so furious because I this whole time I was never going to act against the stalker because I didn't want to encourage him. I don't want to respond to him. I want to make sure the police held this person accountable. And if I respond, the police are going to say, oh, it's back and forth and never do anything about it because apparently it's not okay to defend yourself. And I knew that because I've seen people go through it. So I stayed quiet for months and months, this horrible like abuse from this guy. And when I find out who the financer is, I go, you are an idiot. You are, you have too much money to be fooling around like this. And so I posted online finally about it. And I said, it is this person and this person is on probation. And I even highlight, you know, the, the numbers on her probation papers that she violated, which was engaging in criminal activity and being in a house with someone who's engaging in criminal activity, which, you know, they did, she, this person did. And I post the information for their probation officer because I'm like, let's put an end to this. Like you came after my kids. I've been quiet for so long. You're, you're done. It's over. I'm not giving any attention to that stalker because that stalker is an extension of you. Everything they've done, you've done. They would not be doing this if it wasn't for you. Right. So if you can cut it off at the head, then the stalker would stop. Just like I did the first time when, when uh, I went after Rob Monster. And so her immediate reaction to that was, you know, what, what's common for her is a lack of impulse control. She started to post everything that my stalker had posted reposting everything. And I screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. She even started posting threats towards the victim in the original video that got her arrested on probation. And so, so I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. We got, we got her. Like it was her, I was, we were right. And then sure enough, her family reaches out and said, oh my God, this stalker has been harassing us too on, on her behalf. So yeah, they are working together and they are living together and doing this. And I was like, holy Crap. So I, I contacted the police and I told them, and they said, we're still doing the warrant. Like we're still, get, uh, sorry, they got the warrant. We're looking at the phone records right now. So this is an ongoing investigation. I go, okay, but I found out who's behind it. They said, we're looking into it right now. So they wouldn't take a report. And then I called the sheriff's office where they are. And they said, well, you got to go through your police station. I'm like, but like, this is a probation. So I called the probation officer and they said, this is a probation violation. I said, wonderful. Like, but the sheriff has to do the arrest we can't they have to tell us to they have to do the arrest with us or something i don't remember what the rules were it, was, it didn't make sense so i go back to the sheriff's office who says you got to go back to your police and my police says not until we're done with these fucking phone things which, which i'm like it's not like it's not him that i'm worried about so much it's not the stalker I'm worried about. it's about the financer now because this is this is this person retaliating but they don't really respond to it well sure enough my stalker is trying to hide the trails and demanding that people call into the, the same police department and to harass the police and tell the police that I'm harming them. Call the police as much as you can. Say that I'm harming them. I'm doing it. And so now the police are, you know, they're they're just kind of annoyed 
and fed up with it. And so they don't really want to participate in any of it. And this kind of sucks for me because I'm the one who needed them to do anything because they have to send my report to that police station so that they could tell the probation officer to make the arrest. And they, they just didn't do it. They just didn't do it. And they were getting reports about me. And so they had to look into the reports about me. And I'm like sitting here, like I, I'm not doing the, I'm not engaging in this behavior. I'm very much aware that this will end up in court eventually. And we're going to go into discovery. So I'm not stupid. I'm not going to start acting like an idiot and doing like secret things or going after me. I'm not going to do that. I would, I, I would not that I do that anyway, but like I, I could think ahead that far and they go, yeah, but we just still need to look at it anyway. So that's when I realized that the police are not here to help me at all whatsoever. And so I try to get a restraining order, right? And for my whole family against not my stalker, because I can't find him to serve him, but my financer and say, as an extension, the lawyer and the, um, and the stalker. Well, I try to file it. And they said that I, my filing isn't done correctly. After I spend so long putting all this evidence and everything, they say it's not done correctly. And I'm doing it. This is, I'm doing it in their state. And I do it again. And, and so then the court calls me back and says, you need to hire a lawyer to help you with this because you're not filling it out correctly. Trust me. I follow you on TikTok. I know who you are. I know what you're trying to say. You need to, I, but all I can legally tell you is you're not filling this out correctly and you need to get a lawyer to help you. And I'm like, okay. But, but the problem is, is the stalkers also come after every source of income that I have. And so I know that at any point I could raise money, but that might trigger them to, you know, come after me, to try to come after me legally because they see that I have no money. So I, I, I thought about it. And I was like, I'll just wait for them to act first. Once they, if they do something, like if they try to go a bullshit lawsuit against me, I'll just counter that. Or I can just slowly build, you know, build money through other ways, selling merch, you know, putting out stories and stuff. And maybe I could get to a point where I get a lawyer and they won't even notice. So this person is also trying to like escalate it more. He's all, they're also going, he keeps going after more people in my life, uh, in-laws, my own, you know, my sibling, my, my, um, family, like everyone, everyone at all, just trying to get them to lose their job or to harm them or whatever. And I'm just frustrated sitting here. Why, why I can't get this done. So I tried to file a protective order from my state, but my state doesn't provide a protective order for somebody that you weren't in a relationship with or weren't family with, or, or know, you know, know them. But my relationship to this person, unfortunately, is too distant for me to even file a restraining order for my family. That it's so, it's so messed up. It, that doesn't exist. And I went to the police and I said, is it really like this where I, there, there's not one available? And he said, actually, you're correct. There isn't. But if you, if they get arrested, you can get a guilty plea. And then maybe on that, you get a, a protective order. And, but it's not clear when, when he'll be arrested. So I'm just like, God, this is, this is awful. And then uh, he starts coming after my followers uh, as well. He starts doxing them, doxing their children. That's what he most commonly does is go after children. Now people are posting my personal information everywhere. And spreading rumors and lies, defamatory lies. And so people are like, well, why don't you sue them? Why should you sue them? Well, this, suing all these people is expensive, but I really just need to sue one person, one person who has money to sue too, uh, who engage in all this, you know, defamation and, and conspiracy and all that. So eventually there's a story that came out. Uh, it was labeled City by Karen by, by most people. And it was about this woman who almost got these black teens harmed by screaming and crying that she was in danger, screaming help just because she wanted their bike. And she wanted their electronic bike that they wanted they were using. She wanted to reserve it. So she tried to get them harmed. By so I you know, did a story on that and, and talked about how awful her actions were. And her lawyer threatened to sue, went on, went on TV and said, I'm going to sue anybody who called my client a Karen. And for some reason, the right-wing media ran with that. And now I'm all over right-wing media. And they're saying, this person's going to get sued by City by Karen. Like, I'm not. I didn't break the law by reporting about this. I didn't break the law talking about this. They saw this, like, wave of, like, hatred towards me, and they jumped on that and immediately filed a lawsuit against me. Well, once they did that, I was like, I could start raising money. So I immediately started raising money for a lawyer, and I immediately got a, the money that I needed, and I immediately got my lawyer, and I was like, finally, finally, this is going to come to an end. We're going to get their case dismissed, and then we're going to come after them. So you were kind of waiting to get that lawyer after they had start, first sued you, then you're going to sue them back, get everything dismissed. Well, I, need, I needed to raise the funds to sue because it's expensive. And I knew that at any point I started to try to, that they're going to come after it. And so I didn't know how to present that to my audience. And so then when they had sent the lawsuit after me, it gives me like an opening because it's really like at this point, I have to. 
And so I, I wanted to delay it as much as possible because I wanted to be able to naturally make the money to get a lawyer myself because I didn't know if people were going to want to help me even. So anyway, people did. And it was very generous of them after, you know, years of identifying people and helping people for, for no reason other than you know, they needed help. People returned that generosity. And, and it was very, um, you know, it meant, it meant a lot. Like, I don't the intentions of this stalker and the financer were to, like, break me down, to destroy me. But in the reality of it, they taught me how little the police do in cases like stalking. And because of the, how little the police do, how important and necessary platforms like mine are. And on, and on top of that, it showed me that, like, you know, this takes a lot of strength and resilience. And I've, I've had a lot of people that I've worked with or been friends and stuff who didn't want to help or defend me in any way because they are worried this person is going to come after them. And I get it. I mean, I get it. But it's very isolating to have, you know, all these friends who are large content creators and none of them want to touch it because they're afraid for their own family. I get it, but it sucks. It, it, I try to tell them, like, look, I'm just, they don't want me. They're, they're going to go after this cancel culture as an idea. This is just the beginning. Like, this is, this is how they want to get into it. If it it's going to be you tomorrow. So I would suggest getting on it. But none of them wanted to, and I can't force them to because it is a dangerous thing to do. So it was, it was kind of an isolating feeling. But once I saw all these, like, donations coming in, it, like, it, immediately it, it was very heartwarming. And it just showed me that people do appreciate what I do. And while I'm so worried about these people that hate me, there's so many, so many more people that do appreciate what I do. And I get so focused on the one or two negative comments that come in rather than, you know, all the people who are, you know, leaving positive comments. It's so easy to overlook that. And my own mental health was, I was keeping it as steady as I could for the sake of my family, because, you know, for them, this is, you know, for them, it's difficult. Um, for people that are close to me, it's very difficult. All of this is very difficult. And at times I felt, I felt like he wanted it. He wanted people to feel that it was my fault. And I had to keep reminding myself, I'm not doing this. My content's not doing this. He's doing this. They're doing this. I, 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 and I'm the victim of this. And so are the people around me. And, and none of it should be happening. And it's insane that there's no way to actually stop this. So I continue to be more vocal about all the steps, all the people along the way that have failed. The police. The police on my end haven't even written the financer's name down because they're still looking at the fucking phone warrant, the phone, sorry, the phone records of the stalker who I said doesn't matter. He's not even he at this point has left the country. He left the country and he's documenting his travels through uh, South America and asking for donations while he's there because he's threatened so many people that he'll get arrested. That there's going to be warrants. There's, I'm sure there's warrants out for his arrest. He'll get arrested if he, if he is, comes back to America because he's been very, he's escalated his threats so much. So my focus is the financer. And honestly, not just like wanting to go after them because of what they did, not like in a sense of revenge, but truly just like, I need to get this to end. And on top of that, like this has been like mentally, this has been difficult, very difficult. And they should have to pay for, you know, the mental anguish they put me through, the emotional stress. They should, rightfully so. Because their point is that this is what I do to other people. However, they've crossed so many boundaries that I would never cross. I don't do those things. And the reason they weren't able to, like, drum up a crowd against me is because I haven't done anything. But you've helped enough people, though, where a lot of people do want to help you and get that lawyer. So then you're able to get a lawyer. Yes, I get a lawyer and I get a, I get a really, really good lawyer. He says to me, he, I, I tell him beforehand, just so you know. This person's going to target you. They've already threatened to do that. So uh, you need to know that you're up for it. And he said, I'm, I'm not worried at all. And I said, great. And so I send the lawyer my money and I say, you know, let, let's do it. But days before we were turning in our response, my lawyer files a motion to quit, to quit being my lawyer. And he tells me he's going to do this. The reason is, is because my stalker has been doxing and threatening his child, setting threats. And I know, I know this because he CC'd me in all of them. So I uh, started doxing the child, this little like uh, uh, toddler. I don't know how old this child is, but um, started doxing and threatening the child. And the lawyer was, and, and his wife as well. And the lawyer was just like, this is too much. And he had, and I, and I couldn't get a response of like, what is he, what, can I help you in any way? And he just didn't want it. He just not saying anything else about it. And sure enough, I signed and I say, okay, you could, you could be released. Cause actually this shows the judge how serious this is. I mean, the fact that he did that. The fact that they did that while we're in a court, like we, if, if they had a case, we would solve this legally. I put it on TikTok showing people, look what he did, look what he, look what they did. I told you I wasn't lying. And again, he sends me more messages saying he's going to harass my next lawyer, next lawyer. And so it's, 
And that's where I'm at actually right now. I, he had just done this a week ago. So I am in the process right now of getting a new lawyer. And then I have to respond to their claim. And then after that, then I'm filing my counterclaim. And the lawyer that they're using is the same one who paid for the billboards. It's insane to me that you'd have this much money and you'd go on this defamation spree of, of, uh, and, <laughs> and they'd hire a lawyer who also participated. It seems far away to the end, which is unfortunate because this court process is going to take a while. Right. And you're just right in the thick of everything because they're still stalking you. You're still looking for another lawyer because your lawyer quit. You still need the money. You know, it's all still completely ongoing. Yeah. Well, the financial situation is a little better because I've, I have all these donations. And then the lawyer, original lawyer returns your retainer, you know, the remainder of it. So I, I give the money back they didn't use. So it's not the issue isn't money. And I haven't raised money for a couple of weeks now. I haven't needed to. The issue is like, <laughs> why? I'd see, then I started posting about the sheriff's department in their town. And I said, why didn't you arrest them? They were violating probation. Why didn't you do it? And they, I, I talked to, and, and they didn't respond. So then I dug into the sheriff because I'm like, I'll play these games too. And it turns out that this sheriff had arrested a 10 year old boy for sending threatening text messages. And this is what the text said. It was a picture of a gun emoji and it says it's water day. He took that as a school shooting threat and arrested this 10 year old and perp walked him. Kid ended up being innocent. And, and so then I was, I made this video where I said, how come? That text message was enough for you to say there's children in danger, but the text messages I've received about my children hasn't led you to arrest any of these people when they're on probation. Well, then the sheriff's department's getting bombarded with people on their social medias. I said, don't call them. I don't want to tie up police lines, but get on their social medias. And so they get on social medias and they keep pressuring until finally the sheriff reaches out to me and says, if you want a detective to look at your evidence, we'll do that for you. And so I finally got to speak to a detective last weekend, too. And they were very helpful, and they're going to help me moving forward. So there's a little bit of a relief that, like, things are starting to fall together. But I shouldn't have to go on a platform of 1.6 million people to let people know that the police are failing me for them to finally get a detective to look at a case. Like, this just makes me think all these other people who are stalked who don't have access to a platform like this. What do they do? Very true. And... I mean, now that you have gotten this far, but like I said, you're still in the middle of it. What are your next steps in order to be able to feel safe to stop the stalking? Well, the stalking will not stop until we get the protective order. The The point is to get a protective order and place it as a um, as what it is. The stalking is all happening as an extension of that financer who is, who, that is the person who's doing it. So the reason we knew it was, the financer who did it, by the way, is because I was randomly contacted then by this restaurant that I live near. And they said that these two people walked into their restaurant, then left all these derogatory flyers about me in their bathroom. And I, on the same date, they the same date that I had people take pictures of my kids in front of my house. And I said, do you have the video footage? I said, we do. And so they sent me the video footage. And sure enough, it was a fucking financers. Like I said, it was. So right there in, in video, you have them. And not only that, I contacted their family and said, were they here in my area during this time? They said, yes, they were actually. And I said, was it for the graduation of his eldest? Because we looked into him. It's like, so the, uh, one of the financiers, his eldest son had, was graduating an hour away from where I live. Was that on the, the 20th of May? And they said, yes. And I said, and where were they? Were they at the graduation? And said, oh, they were gone for most of it. On the 20th, they were gone. They took the car. They left. They went to do this. And I'm like, is this them? And they're like, yes. That's them. And, and, and so we had their family's confirmation because I know the FBI needs someone close by to confirm that. So we had that there for them too. And still, still no arrests have been made. Nothing's happened. And the financer's probation has ended. So we can't get them on probation anymore because nobody did anything. But uh, the, the, the most frustrating part about this is how much force and effort I have had to put. I have had to get so many websites shut down that this person posted my personal information on, posted, you know, photos of me that are, uh, that they've stolen and posted on there. I'd get so many taken down myself. Like it, if I wasn't vigilantly doing this and didn't know how to do it, they were, I couldn't stop this person. Yeah. I mean, we've said before being stalked is a full-time job, just trying to stay safe, trying to, you know, if you're being doxxed, keep your name out of things. Do you think that you're going to be able to get some kind of justice? I believe, 
by by the end of it, especially once I've presented my evidence to the judge, I believe that the stalkers, uh, they're going to go to jail. I, I believe that, that I'll be able to sue them for damages. And I also believe that I'm able to get that, I'll be able to get that protective order and from an ex- extension of that, that goon that they hired as well. Because that is what I'm, that is what I am going to be raising any amount of money possible for. And so that to leave me, my family, my followers, my platform alone. I believe I can with the help of my followers. Uh, I'm so grateful for that, but I believe I can. It's just going to take time. And so what I have to do in that time is continue to make my content without even slowing down because I'll be damned if I ever let them feel like they've ever succeeded and ever slowing me down. Yeah. I mean, your content is something that's helping your followers. It's helping a lot of people. You know, you're, you're trying to find these perpetrators and, you know, hold them accountable. And I know a lot of your followers are probably dealing with stalkers as well. You've taken this on and this is something that you've had to deal with. What type of advice would you have for anyone that's also dealing with this? I mean, now that you're going through it. The advice that I could give is the advice that people have heard several times before, because it's the only thing that works is to not feed into the stalker, is to document absolutely everything. Do not respond, report things and keep yourself safe however you can. I know that it seems hard. I know that it seems draining to have to do every single day. But the most important thing is to never give up. Never give them that satisfaction, but also never give up for your own health. It should not be happening to you. You are a victim. And that's one thing that you don't hear too much when you're the victim of this, unfortunately. But you are. You are the victim. And it's okay for you to lose your mind every now and then to be overly emotional. That's totally normal. It's a normal way to react when you're being stalked. 